So you can see all the, 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 the sort of mechanism. Here's a blood clot. It gets blocked, jammed into a blood vessel, and then it turns into a plaque. Now, obviously, that isn't quite happening in the rest of your body, potential, or maybe it is happening in the rest of your body. Um, so you start thinking, well, blood clots can become plaques. We can see that from start to finish. The process is there. You can make them happen by injecting blood clots into our animals. You can see children who have no other reason to have atherosclerosis developing atherosclerosis. And then other people did research more recently showing that people who have Eisenmenger syndrome and who create clots in their lung, in their heart, these will end up in the lungs and they will turn into atherosclerosis. So you have the whole process here and you think, well, why has this not been taken up? And in fact, I was taught, I never realized it at the time, I was taught by um, Elspeth Smith, who was a cardiovascular researcher. Um, she said at one point to me, in, a, in sort of retrospect, she said, LDL, which is what we call cholesterol, LDL, low density lipoprotein, we call it cholesterol, it's just nonsense cannot get through the endothelium, which is the lining of all blood vessels. Mm -hmm. It is unable to pass through the endothelium. And this kind of comment, and this was in a small group tutorial, I remember thinking, she said that it meant really something. That was really significant. I don't quite understand why it was significant. I didn't know what LDL was, and I didn't mm -hmm. know what endothelium was. I then started reading some of her stuff, and she made... What she said was, and this is in 1980-something, that atherosclerosis is basically due to blood clotting. And it, from start to finish, it is blood clotting all the way through, start to finish. She said this. She should have a Nobel Prize. Mm. She's dead, so she won't. And there have been other researchers. Ronald Ross, was, he was called a um, uh, response to injury hypothesis. What he said was that if the endothelium, the lining of your blood vessels becomes damaged or disrupted in some way, that, um, that, that um, at that point, a blood clot forms on that area because, because obviously the body thinks the, if a blood vessel is damaged, it needs that blood, that may mean I'm about to be bleeding to death. Mm -hmm. So I have to block that very quickly. There's normally a blood vessel be damaged, somebody sticks a knife in you or a tiger sticks a claw in you or whatever. So you have to stop that bleeding very, very quickly, especially in arteries, which have much higher blood pressure. So you have to have a system whereby blood clots form really quickly and they have to be really difficult to sort of remove. Otherwise, there's no point in them. So if you damage the lining of a blood vessel, there's a, there's a substance in your blood vessel, it's called tissue factor, um, which you ask 100 doctors, none of them have heard of it. Anyway. It's like Instaclot. Uh, you'll all have heard of factor eight and factor seven and factor nine and factor 10 and all these things. That's a slow clotting system. That's the intrinsic system. The extrinsic system is clot now, here, now, instantly. Mm -hmm. So when you disrupt the endothelium, a blood clot will form at that point, bang, stick to that point and it will form. It will be quite big to start with. It will get shaved down, but it will still be there stuck to the blood vessel wall. It's called a mural thrombus. That's the term for it. And then you ask another question, was, well, well, what happens to it then? Because if that blood vessel that's sticking to the side of an artery was to break off and travel down the artery, it would cause, it could cause a stroke or a heart attack further down the artery or damage to other organs, all sorts of nasty things can happen. So clearly it cannot be allowed to break off. So it's stuck onto the artery wall, however big it may be. What do you do with it? Well, you know, if you scratch your skin, you get a scab and the scab falls off because the skin grows up from underneath and pushes it off really. Well, that doesn't happen in your blood vessels because the, the lining, the endothelium, it's only one layer thick and it cannot come from underneath because there's no underneath. And it can't come from the sides because once an endothelial cell is what they call mature, it doesn't, it can't replicate itself, it's stuck. And so a lot of people have been str struggled with this for a while. Well, where does the new endothelium come from? Where, does it, what is, where is it from? And they realized in about the mid-1990s, it comes from within your bone marrow. Mm -hmm. It's made in blood. It's made by stem cells. It's called endothelial progenitor cells. They float around in your bloodstream. And if they find an area of damage, they stick onto it. And then they grow and they form a new layer of endothelium over the top 
of the blood clot that's sitting there. So the blood clot is now within your artery wall. And this is an, a thing that, of course, they didn't know originally, which is why Rocky Tansky in 1852 couldn't answer the question, how can your blood clot be underneath the endothelium? Because blood clots form in the bloodstream. They don't form outside the bloodstream. And he couldn't answer that question, um, but you could answer it now, which is, well, actually you get the damage, you get the blood clot, and then the endothelium grows on top of it, reforms, and the blood clot is drawn into the artery wall. 